the tide roll to the earth knows you're a god of love let my dry bones sing a new song all the glory to the god of love all the glory to the god of love all the glory to the god of love Oh, hello. If you guys want to stand, ooh, I, whenever I talk, it happens multiple times. Ooh. If you guys just want to say first, just say hello to somebody next to you, just welcome them. It's super awesome for you guys to be here with us tonight. want you guys to know the front is open if you guys want to come to the front there's some space in the back but just make you guys yourselves comfortable and worship tonight amen you guys excited for bobby to be here as well come on it's gonna be such a good night it's gonna be such a good night the lord's gonna move believe that people are gonna be healed tonight just in the presence of the lord just as we were just meeting in the back just just talking about when his presence comes things just change Wrong things are made right. Sickness leaves, pain leaves. And I just want us to be full of expectation. I really believe that the Holy Spirit is drawn to our expectancy. He's drawn to it. And so I just want you to hold out your hands. say, Holy Spirit, I believe that you're here tonight. Say, Father, I believe that you're in a good mood tonight. Say, Jesus, thank you for what you already bought on the cross. Now, Father, we just thank you, God, that we have the opportunity to worship you in this place tonight. That we have the opportunity to just give you honor, to give you glory, to give you praise, to give you everything that you're worthy of. And we thank you that we don't have to work our way up to it or strive to get into your presence, God. But you're already here. You're already here. So Father, I just ask that if we don't feel that already, that you would just have a turning of our hearts.
crowned with thorns is crowned in glory now the Savior nailed to wash our feet now at his feet we bow the one who wore the one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see your name your name is victory in all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory in all praise will rise to christ our king The fear that held us now gives way to Him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. The held us now gives way to His final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. Yeah. Your name, your name is victory. In all praise will rise to Christ our King. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, come on, is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, come on, is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise. soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days 
his body there would not remain our God and our God is robbed the grave our God is robbed the Failed. And now nothing will 
sing out to him. Let's just give him glory. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just in your own words tonight. Just in your own song. Just as we lift him up. Just begin to thank him in your own words, whatever it is. Even if it's just saying his name.
God, there's so much power in his name.
There is beauty in what I can't understand When Jesus hits you When Jesus hits you Sing, I believe Oh, I believe You're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen They're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe Can't resurrect a man with my own hand But just the mention of your name can raise the dead. Come on, let's sing it out. So all the glory. So all glory to the only one who can. Oh, Jesus, it's you. Oh, Jesus, it's you. Yeah. You're the wonder-working God. You're the wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen But too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen You're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love After everything I've seen But you're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe After everything I've seen You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe After everything I've seen You're too good to not believe You're too good to not believe God. You're too good, too good Even better than I could have thought Yes, Jesus Come on, let's sing it out Let's sing, I've seen cancer disappear I've seen cancer disappear I've seen metal plates dissolve Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it I've seen real life resurrection I've seen mental health restored Oh, don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it I've seen families reunited I've seen prodigals return But don't you tell me he can't do it But don't you tell me he can't do it Oh, I've seen troubled so delivered Addicts finally free But don't you tell me he can't do it But don't you tell me Come on, sing it out, I've seen cancer Oh, I've seen cancer disappear Oh, I've seen metal plates dissolve But don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it Now I've seen real life resurrection I've seen mental health restored But oh, don't you tell me he can't do it But oh, don't you tell me he can't do it But oh, I've seen families reunited I've seen prodigals return But oh, don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it Oh, I've seen troubled souls delivered I've seen addicts finally free But don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you, we'll see cities in revival, come on And we'll see cities in revival And salvation flood the 
streets Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it And we'll see glory fill the nations Like the world has never seen But Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you Cause I believe you're up Oh, I believe you're a wonder-working God. You're a wonder-working God. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God. And you heal because you love. But the miracles we'll see, you're too good to not believe. You're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Are too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe You're the wonder-working Come on, come on. For everything I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, you're too good. Come on, let's keep singing that out. You're too good. You're too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, you're too good to not come on, sing it. You're too good to not believe. You're too good to not after everything. After everything I've seen, you're too good. Come on, let's sing it out. Come on, keep it going. You're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, you're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. You're too good to not believe. After everything I've seen, you're too good to seem came to disappear. Oh, I've seen metal plates dissolve. But don't you tell me he can't do it. But don't you tell me he can't do it. Oh, I've seen real life resurrection. I've seen mental health restored. But don't you tell me he can't do it. Come on, let's sing this out again. I've seen families reunited. And I've seen families reunited. I've seen prodigals return. But don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. And I've seen troubled souls delivered. I've seen addicts finally free. But don't you tell me he can't do it. One more time, we'll see cities in revival. And we'll see cities in revival And salvation flood the streets Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can't do it And we'll see glory fill the nations Like the world has never seen Don't you tell me he can't do it Don't you tell me he can Cause I believe you're the wonder-working God You're the wonder-working God All the miracles I've seen Are too good to not believe You're the wonder-working God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see Are you too good to not believe The wonder-working God you're the one do work in God All the miracles I've seen Are too good to not believe You're the one do work in God And you heal because you love All the miracles we'll see You're too good to not believe Come on, yeah, give him praise
Faith could not hold you The veil told before You silenced the boast of sin and grace What he does, come on The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory Before you are raised to life again You have no rival You have no equal God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. And death could not hold you. The veils will be for you. In silence, the boast of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, and for you are raised to life again. And you have no rival, and you have no equal, and now and forever, God, forever, God, you reign. Yours is the King. Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. Oh, you have no rival, you have no equal, and now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. And nothing can stand against. What a powerful name. You have no rival, you have no rival, you have no equal, and now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name. my king what a powerful name it is and nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus He's good, right? Amen. He's good. He's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. You're so good, God. You're so good, God. We lift you up, Jesus. We lift you up, God. We lift up your name.
Redeeming what was lost in all that could have been All this is a healing kind of love And you are the truest friend Staying through the night when I was at my end Comforting my heart till it was light again All this is a faithful kind of love When you are your everlasting Father
God is good. God is good. Would you do something with me? His name holds power. We're going to do something in the spirit together. I want you to put that desire that's on your heart. If it's a loved one that may be away from the Lord, Maybe it's a fear, any trial that you may be facing, a friend at your workplace, whatever the Holy Spirit's highlighting, would you do something with me? With them on your heart, with them in your mind, we're going to shout to the Lord. We believe that when we speak the name of Jesus, that miracles happen. We believe that just through the simple name, there is power in the name of Jesus. Strongholds come down. Now, I know I'm in a room full of people that are in great anticipation of a move of God. Let's believe that through this simple act of shouting his name, Let's expect a miracle to happen. Let's get that heart of a child that truly believes that their dad can do anything. Are you with me? On the count of three, I would love for you to be excited with some smiles on your face, shouting the name of our Lord and Savior. I believe something's going to shift in our hearts. Something's going to shift in our atmosphere. Let's do this together. Are you ready? Are you ready? One. Jesus on three. Are you ready? Two. Three. Jesus!
Jesus, you're good. the name of Jesus. You're good, God. Jesus, you're good. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we thank you that you draw near to your children. You're not a dad who's far off. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, that you are drawing ever so near. I thank you that you care about every desire that's on our hearts because you put it there. So we trust you and we praise your name. And we all said, amen, amen. Would you guys thank the worship team? They did a fantastic job. Well, welcome, my name is Pastor Andrew. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. Before you get seated, hold on, hold on now, hold on. We got a little bit, we got some more fun things to do. After our service, we're going to take, we're going to have a moment of where we get to sow some seed into a man who has left an impact, I'm sure, on many of our hearts that has had words that have come from Scripture, mostly. <laughs> I mean, he's got some crazy stories that are his own that are not in Scripture. But I mean, when, when Pastor Bobby talks, it, Oftentimes, it's the word of the Lord, just that is written in his word. I love it. But we get to have a moment where we're going to sow into his ministry, to sow into what the Lord is doing through the life of this amazing man of God. So let's look forward to that after our service today. Would you do something else with me? We've got a couple cameras that are roaming around the room. We have some family members that are joining us online. It's kind of the times that we're in. People join online, people fill the room, but there's still family all around. Would you do something with me? Would you say hi? Hello, cameras. Hello, people online. We love you. You're amazing. Thanks for joining us. And I know that you all don't know each other yet. We're going to do something fun. It's all, it's all we do here. We have a lot of fun. I would love for you to go around and meet at least one person that you have never met before. Introduce them, tell them where you're from, and how you heard about the event tonight. Okay? We're going to have a song. It's going to play in the background, and you guys are going to go meet one another. Okay? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Is this camera on? Hey guys, my name is Pastor Andrew. Thank you for joining us. This is a, a really fun event that we get to do. We're so blessed to have Bobby with us today. And we're also blessed to have you guys. You know, if the Lord can use the mouth of a donkey to leave an impact on a man's life that so shaped the world, he can use the internet. God can do anything that he wants. And he's all over you. He cares about you. He sees you. He knows you. He's handpicked you. Thank you guys for joining us. We love you so much. Let's have a great night tonight.
All right, everybody. Go ahead, find your seats. We're going to keep on rolling. We're so glad you all made it tonight. This is going to be a fantastic weekend. If you didn't know, we will be having Bobby tomorrow morning at our Sunday service here at Convergence starting at 1030. Bobby will be also joining us tomorrow morning. So if you don't have plans tomorrow, come on by. Come on through. We would love to have you guys. So glad you're here. Without any further ado, y'all, we're going to have a really great time. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Would you guys welcome Pastor Bobby Connor? Thank you, brother. Amen. Good. Well, hello. Everybody okay? Go ahead and be seated. You know, we're actually better than we think we are. Honestly, pretty amazing. We were chosen in eternity past to live in the present to forge the future. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Ecclesiastes 3.1 said there's a time and a season and a purpose for every activity of God under heaven. A time and a season and a purpose for every activity of God under heaven. Timing is really something with God. Esther 4.14 says, I'm in the kingdom for such a time as this. Wow. There's never been a time like we're going through right now. These are unprecedented times. This is a time of a tremendous shaking. I prophesied about it, wrote it in the shepherd's rod. I wrote it in the shepherd's rod that there was going to come a mighty pandemic. It's in there. Uh, see, God won't do anything on planet Earth without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. That's Amos 3, 7. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It says, surely the Lord God will do nothing except reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And so that's what happened. The Lord showed me back there in uh, 2019 that there was coming a shake-up for a wake-up. A shake-up for a wake-up, and that's happening. And I'm telling you, the church is awakening. They really are. They're awakening. We're awakening to the fact that uh, we need God. We can't survive without God. And we're going to find out that He is a very present help. He's not distant. He's not taking a vacation. He that keepeth thee will not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. And we need to do that. Psalms 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. See, sometimes we forget how good God's been to us. Every good and perfect thing we have comes from God. Not our own, own ingenuity. It came from God. You, you know, you might say, well, I'll have you to know I work for everything I got. If God's grace wasn't on you, you couldn't have got out of bed. You understand that? Every good and perfect gift comes from God. So we're excited about being here. Uh, I really mean that. Uh, what a day to be alive. Never, never been a day like this. Uh, and let me tell you about some of the things that God has for you in your future. You want to know that? See, a lot of people, they pay these goofy psychics. You can't, you can't get the future from a psychic. You can get a demon, but you can't get the future. I can show you straight from the Bible how to tell the future. What? I can tell you straight from the Bible how you can get information about the future. It comes from the Holy Spirit. He shall declare to you the things that will come in your future. That's in the Bible. I'll show it to you after a while when we get started. So anyway, uh, I want to visit with you just a little bit about you being you. This identity theft deal going on, you know, you hear about, they say every few seconds somebody's identity is stolen. Let me tell you, ever since the church has been the church, the devil has been busy trying to steal our identity. He doesn't want you to know who you are. I guarantee you, you'll never understand who you are till you understand whose you are. You understand that? You, you belong to Him. Your name is written and carved in the palm of His hand. Let me tell you something about God. He's jealous over you. He calls you His jewels. You're, you're His specially acquired treasure. Now, let me tell you, I'll tell you, He chose us, like I told you, He chose us somewhere back there in eternity past to live in this present to forge the future. And listen, this is a real important task. Now, God does not vacillate on his plans. When God has a plan, he stays with the plan. You go, well, brother, brother, could you tell me God's plan? Yes, I can. It's not hard to find. It's Genesis 1, 26. 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, you get to hear a conversation between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Here's what they say. You ready? Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our own image, and let's give him kingdom control. That, that's God's original plan. He's not diverted from it one bit. He's, he's going to hold us responsible for what happens to planet Earth. That's in the Bible. What? God is going to hold us, believers, responsible for what happens on planet Earth. Have you, and, and here I'll, I'll quote you a verse, okay? Psalms, 50, Psalms 115. I quote Psalms 115, verse 14 and 15 a lot, and I'll just release it on you right now. Psalms 115, verse 14 and 15 says, May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your entire family. May you be blessed to the God that made the heavens and the earth. Say, I received that. But, you know, I very seldom quote Psalms 115, verse 16. Psalms 115, verse 16 says, The heavens of heavens, that belongs to God. But this earth is your responsibility. Wow. The heavens of heavens, that belongs to God. But this earth is your responsibility. You might say, Bobby, when did you get that verse? I'll tell you when I got that verse. I knew, I knew it was in there, but I didn't get it till it got me. And that's really how it happens. I was sitting on the front row uh, in Knoxville, Tennessee in, on August the 28th. Now, and it was 100 and, uh, 106 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's when uh, all of those wildfires was burning up there in the northwest. 98 wildfires, remember? Uh, we were spending $1,400,000 a day trying to put them out and couldn't put them out. Well, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee there that uh, August the 28th. I'm sitting on a pew there getting ready to preach. And the Lord said, hey, Bobby. I go, yes. He said, how long are you going to let those wildfires burn? I said, I didn't know it's my responsibility. That's when I got that verse, Psalms 115, verse 16. The heavens of heavens, that belongs to God. This earth is your responsibility. So I got to feeling really funny. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to get up, walk up to the pulpit, and I want you to prophesy that I'm sending you to the northwest. You're going to lift your hands and prophesy a snowstorm, and I'm going to put the fires out. What? <laughs> August the 28th, 106 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going up there and prophesy a snowstorm? <laughs> Look out now. See, God likes to do the impossible. He wants you to see that the supernatural is natural. So I get up there and I do it. I prophesy, I'm going to the northwest. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to prophesy a snowstorm in the name of Jesus. And God will send a snowstorm and put the fires out. Oh, well, sure enough, you can Google it. The, if you look up the archives of the Missoula, Montana paper, you can still see it. Uh, sure enough, God sent. I, I got up there finally. I got up there, lifted my hands and prophesied a snowstorm. The next morning, a uh, snowstorm came and the... The paper had headlines this big. says, surprise snowstorm, uh, job fires extinguished, job well done, showed the firemen coming off the mountain. Isn't that cool? God can do anything. Nothing is impossible with God. <laughs> Nothing. Genesis 18, 14. Have you read that verse? Genesis 18, 14 says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Job 42, 2. Put that one down. Job 42, 2 says, God. I know anything you set your heart and your hand to do can't be stopped. Whoa. Aren't you glad God doesn't have to check with somebody to see if he's going to run his plan? He's God. He does whatever he wants to do. His counsel is set. Now, God did choose us. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Wow. I studied Ephesians 2.10 out of every English translation of the Bible I could find on earth. Ephesians 2.10, it's a very strong verse for us about our destiny. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God before ordained that we conduct ourselves in them. Catch what that says. God made things for you to do before He made you. Wow. Isn't that cool? Say Purpose. God created things for you to do before he created you. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship. One translation says, we're his stroke of genius to display his God deeds. One translation says, you're the best God could do to display who he is. So when the devil comes up and goes, who do you think you are? Goes, mm, I'm the best God could do. 
that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? That's really cool. We're made in His image. We're made in the very image of God. Wow. Pretty. And when you get born again, the Spirit of the living God comes in you. The same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. The Bible says, what? Don't you know that you're a temple of God? Wow. We've got to get a new appreciation for us. Look what it took to purchase us. You're not redeemed with corruptible things such as gold and silver, but with the what? Precious. I dare you to look up that word precious in the Greek. We, we don't even have a word for it. It means incalculable. The blood of Jesus is so valuable, you can't put a value on it. Wow. And that's what God freely shed for you and I. We're precious to Him. Isn't that amazing? You need a new appreciation for yourself. That's really true. Uh, there's a lot of people that underestimate themselves. And is it okay to walk around? You know, because mo most time I don't, I don't stand up here. I just kind of meander around. <laughs> and that's, that's okay. Sometimes a cameraman has trouble, but you'll just have to catch up. <laughs> Do the best you can, you know. Jesus didn't even have a cameraman, did he? <laughs> but uh, if you could kind of, you know, I want to sound like Morgan Freeman. And kind of uh, maybe Brad Pitt look, you know, without the, okay, I, the, do, do the best you can do. Yeah. Don't you, don't you love the things of God? There's a verse just keeps spinning around my head. It's Psalms 110 verse 3. Psalms 110 verse 3 said, in the day of his power, his troops will volunteer freely. They'll be anxious to go to work for God. Psalms 110 verse 3, in the day of his power. That would be now. His troops, that would be you, will volunteer freely. They'll be anxious to get into the fray. Did you know the most repetitive name in the Bible for God? Dun, 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 dun. The most repetitive name in the Bible for God is Lord of Armies, Lord of Hosts. Now that ought to give us a clue. There's a struggle going on. Lord of Hosts. Ooh. Listen, you think the devil's going to go, oh, conversions. I didn't know you wanted the kingdom. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven suffereth violent, and the violent sees it by force. The Bible said the weapons are warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a war on. You know that, don't you? The devil would if he could kill every one of us in this room tonight. John 10, 10, John 10, 10, the thief comes but for what? You kill, steal, and to destroy. But see, he's a loser. He can't even lock his own door. Did you read Revelation chapter 1? Jesus resurrected and he's got the keys of something. Death, hell, and the grave. Devil can't even lock his own door. He is totally defeated if we'll understand who we are. That's so true. 1 John 4, 4, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Here's your great verse, and the devil don't like it. Romans, Romans 16, 20. Romans 16, 20 said, The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Shortly means now. Wow. The God of peace. See, the, the, you don't understand the value of peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and your mind. But the devil wants to sow fear. Fear brings dread. Oh, see, the Bible says, Jesus said it this way, men's hearts failing them for the things they see coming upon the earth. Wow, the stress and the anxiety. Ah, God dealt with me about anxiety and stress. Guess what he said? He told me, he said, Bobby. I said, yes. Tell my people. You can't medicate anxiety. You have to repent of it. You can't medicate it. You have to repent of it. Be anxious for nothing. But with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, that's the only place in the Bible that says tranquility of soul. You'll have tranquility of the soul. God wants you to have peace. Jesus said it this way, come to me all ye that labor, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, and you will find rest for your soul. You don't, you can't imagine the, the oh man, the just frazzled out people of God. Settle down. Daniel 7 says the devil attempts to wear out the saints of God. 
How does he do it? By accusing God. But what we've got to do, we've got to find peace. And in it, Psalm 16, uh, 1611, Psalm 1611 says what? In his presence is what? Fullness of joy. And his, in his, pre, his presence is peace and joy. I, listen, get into the presence of God. You say, how do you do it, Bobby? Here it is, Matthew 6, 6. You need to tie two verses together, Matthew 6, 6 and Psalms 46, 10 and 11. Psalms 46, 10, 11 says, Be still and know that I am God. You, we are a generation that can't stand silence. we got to be active. We're going to put something on in. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> we need to learn how to be still. Psalms 46, 10, 11, Be still and know that I am God. Any benefit to knowing God? Book of Job says, acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace and good will come unto you. Get to know God. See, the devil knows some verses. He knows Daniel 11, 32b. Daniel 11, 32b. That would be the second part of Daniel 11. Daniel 11, 32b. Here's what it says. But the people that do know their God, they will display strength and they will take action. All right, the devil knows that verse. It's if you know God, you're going to be strong and do exploits. So the devil's going to do everything he can to keep you distracted from knowing God. Hosea said it this way, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We're going to have to get to know God. How do you get to know? Spend time with him. Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye what? First. I'm screaming. I, I, I just like to scream. I got verses for it in the Bible. That Psalms 47 y'all were doing a while ago. Did you read Psalms 47 verse 1? Clap to the Lord and shout with the voice of triumph. It confuses the enemy. That's what it says it does. It causes the enemy's camp to be confused. I want to do everything you can to weird him out, don't you? <laughs> Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will crush Satan down your feet. Luke 10, 19, that's a good one. Behold, don't you like behold? Let's look at this artwork you got there. Oh, that You could write a book with all that. Look at that line. Don't you like a line? Oh, man, I've got a whole book about the line-like warriors called Dread Champions. We're going to talk about the books in a moment because you go, why does this book abound? Jesus. <laughs> it's going to teach you about Jesus. It's going to train you how to be a warrior, a valiant warrior. God said, I want you to write a book about Dread Champions. Wow. And wow, all of us are supposed to be warriors. We are. We are supposed to be warriors. We're supposed to fight the good fight. I used to be a, well, you know, I used to be a street fighter. This is all true. You never get the crap beat out of it and go, wow, that was a good fight. The good fight's the one you win. And Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, there's a struggle. The devil would if he could kill us all. But let's look at this. Luke 10, 19. It starts out like this, behold. We've even lost the meaning of behold. That word behold means drop, stop everything you're doing. Focus firmly on what's being said. See, we go, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean drink this in. It's treasure. It's, it's a world of wealth to you. Behold, focus firmly on this. Behold, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and it will in no wise hurt you. I dare you to really eat that verse up. Here's what it literally says. Behold, look firmly on this. I give you ability. I give you authority to stop the devil's ability. I give you authority. Those words power, they're, they're, they're not power like dunamis. I give you authority to stop the devil's ability. What ability? Kill, steal, and to destroy. You and I have been given authority. That's true. Second Corinthians, what? 5, 520 says, now are we ambassadors for Christ? When? Now. Book selling going okay? Good, I'm glad. Oh, we write them, you know, because listen, the Lord appeared to me and stood right in front of me. Jesus Christ appeared to me and stood right in front of me. And he took his fingers just like this. 
And he said, uh, he asked a question. And here's what he said to me. You ready? Hey, Bobby, do you know what a printed word is? And he did his finger just like that. Do you know what a printed word is? I said to him, apparently not. <laughs> That's what I said. And then he said, a printed word is a thought you can see. Now that's profound. A printed word. That's, that you can see the thoughts of God appear on the pages. I'm telling you, a printed word, very, very important. So you have to play. I'll give you a verse about playing. You ready? Psalms 144, verse 1. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So when you're strumming the strings, it's a battle going on, okay? Psalms 144, verse 1. He teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Don't you like, don't you like the Bible? It's bread. It's, it's food. It'll strengthen us. Oh, we've got to move from being hearers to doers. James 1.22, it says we must move from just merely hearing the word to putting it into action. It's got to move us to the point of action. God never intended for us to be spectators on the sideline, participators on the front line. We're supposed to be building the kingdom of God. God told him, said, I'm raising a kingdom company that will rule the visible realm from the invisible realm, but they will do it through a demeanor of love. Isn't that cool? That's good. How tall are you? Six one. I think you're taller than that, but, you know, that's what I think. I'll get a laser out in a minute. We'll find out. The Lord said to you, you can if you want to. Okay? You can if you want to. All right? Uh, listen, if you're at a red light and the light turns green, somebody's about to honk. The light's green, okay? All right. That's between me and him. I don't know him. He don't know me. But he knows what we're talking about. That's true. You all right? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do some doodling, some artwork. Okay? Just It'll, it'll just flow out and you can draw some stuff. Okay? You can draw some stuff. Yes. Sometimes at the book table, I sign people's books and give them a verse. But sometimes I'll say, if you'll just make a squiggle, I'll draw something out of it. Oh, it's crazy. You can't imagine what's happened in those. One lady came up and she was kind of a business kind of lady. And she said, uh, I, I said, if you'll make a little squiggle, I'll draw you something out of it. She said, what? I said, if you'll make a little squiggle on the page, I'll draw you something. She said, okay. She took the pen and she goes, <laughs> made the goofy little squiggle looking thing. And instantly I saw it turn into a Chinese hat. So I drew a Chinese person. And that's, I drew it out, you know, and a Chinese person. So here's what happened. I said to her, one day you'll be a missionary in China. She looked at me like, you are an idiot. <laughs> but guess what happened? She carried the little art doodle to an artist and had him draw a portrait of it. And then the next time I see the lady, she brings a portrait and a letter from Dennis Balcom who's a great missionary in China that had accepted her on his missionary team in China. See? See, you need to buddy up with the prophets. That's, that, that's what it says. Second Chronicles 20, 20. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, Trust the Lord. You will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. I looked up the word prosper. It means live at God's highest point level for your life. A second Chronicles 20, 20, for those of you that are searching. Yeah, trust the Lord, you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Are you ready for favor? This, this guy with the beard. Are you ready for favor? God's trying to give it to you. Okay? Second Corinthians 6, 2. Today is an acceptable time, a time of favor, a time of an assured welcome. Second Corinthians 6, 2. Okay? God, there's a, that's a wonderful verse, isn't it? You like verses? Heck yeah! Here's your verse. You ready? You ready? Psalms 84.11. Psalms 84.11 says, 
God speaking, I will give you present day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. What? Do you see as you journey with God, it gets better? Psalms 84, 11, I will give you present day favor, future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. Wow. Why would you uh, depart from God's path? God's path is always leading us upward. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, As we'll behold him with an unveiled face, we'll be changed from one dimension of glory to the next. Wow. I like that gal over there. She's messing with her hair. What's your name, honey? Madeline? Madeline. Natalie. Natalie, God bless you. How old are you? 11 years old. Oh, I got a little granddaughter. She's something. Uh, she's just, she's your age. God, good gracious. Uh, you know, she's... Years ago when she was small, she said, Papa, I'll preach. I know what kind of car I want you to get me. <laughs> I said, what? She said, one of those with the zeros on them, an Audi, you know. <laughs> I said, well, that's probably not going to happen. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, that's, they call me Papa Preach. That's a pretty good name. All the grandkids, I can ask any one of them. The Lord told me, I want you to teach your children's children Bible, the Bible. I said, that's noble. I want to do it. I said, what verse you want me to teach them? Now, we've got them all the way from 6 to uh, uh, 26. And he said, I want you to teach them the Bible. I said, oh, what verse? And uh, this is Psalms 119, verse 9 through 11 says, out of the King James says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy word with my whole heart have I sought after thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. That sounds like Shakespeare to me. Now, do you think some Texas rednecks are going to memorize that? No! So uh, he said, what you need to do is teach it to them in a vernacular they can receive. And I can call any one of them right now. And I could say, how can a young person live a clean life? And they'll scream out by obeying the Bible. See, it's the very same thing, but in a vernacular they can receive. Why well, put the Hey, so high, the cows can't reach it. Isn't that stupid? See, that's what happens with these intellectual preachers. They're trying to wow your mind. Your mind can't touch God. That's what it says. It's foolishness to you. Neither can you know it. You must be spiritually discerned. The natural mind receives not the things of the Spirit. It's foolishness to you. And you have to, you have to become childlike to really lay hold of the things of God. That's what Jesus said, except you become a little child, you can't see or enter the kingdom. Well, I better get up here and talk. In the morning, we're having a service. Whoa. You know what I'm going to talk about in the morning? Heck yeah. Hey, redneck lapel, looky there. <laughs> see? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I could have taped it along here, but you know, it would be a little awkward. I know some of you go, is he for real? I'm the realest thing you've seen lately. I'm telling you. God told me one time, he said, you amuse me, boy. That's what he said. You amuse me, boy. I could tell you some things he told me you would want to hear. One time Jesus Christ appeared to me and said, uh, I want you to study Song of Solomon, the Bible of Chapter, Song of Solomon. Jesus Christ said to me, I want you to study Song of Solomon. I said to Jesus Christ, I don't get nothing out of that book. That's about as dumb as you can get. For the creator of the universe to say, study this portion, and you say, I don't get nothing out of that book. And so help me, guess what his next statement was? You don't know nothing about kissing, do you, boy? That's what Jesus said. And I said to him again, apparently not. <laughs> See, the Song of Solomon says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth because his mouth is altogether lovely. That's what Song of Solomon says. Song of Solomon almost didn't get in the Bible because of the love language. It is absolutely filled with fire about the love the Lord has for his people. He said, turn away your eyes. One glance of your eyes has ravished my heart. Wow, Song of Solomon. 
he taught me about kissing. He said, you want to hear it? Being tutored by the Lord about kissing, mouth kissing. Here's what it says. He said to me, Bobby, to mouth kiss, you have to be face to face. Bobby, to mouth kiss, you have to be really close. He said, mouth kissing is the most preparatory uh, act before intimacy. And see, God wants us to be intimate with him. To really come to know him in a deeper, fuller way. That's what the Song of Solomon's about. So I spent a few years studying Song of Solomon. It is absolutely rich and wonderful. Well, anyway, so tomorrow I'm going to be talking about what to do when you don't know what to do. Now, you may be here or even live streaming or however they do this. You may be here so deluded and so puffed with ego that you go, Ha, oh, brother, that's not any applicable to me because I always know what to do. Well, if we, you and I were sitting at a table, I'd say, Well, you're an idiot. <laughs> if you think, if you think you're going to always have the answers, I promise you this. I make a vow. I'll prove it to you tomorrow. I, I promise you God himself will get you in a situation, in a circumstance, you cannot find your way out on your own. God himself will do that for you. Why? To show you how bad you need him. Pride goes before fall, a haughty spirit. We've got to understand we can't do anything without him. That's what it said in the book of, uh, book of John. Without me, you can do nothing. I see y'all have not loosed the drummer. Every church I get into, they've caged the drummers. <laughs> One church I was in, so help me, this is true. They had built the drum cage like an aquarium. And they had these blow-up fish in there with him. So it looked like he's in the middle playing in a, in an aquarium of some sort. Mm. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, so I guess I better get down to business. Tomorrow I will talk to you about what to do when you don't know what to do and then what to do when uh, it seems like you don't want to do nothing. When you're so disappointed, so discouraged, you're ready to give up. I'm going to show you events in the Bible, how to get over whatever hump the devil's put in front of you. Let us not grow weary in well-doing. We will reap if we faint not. The devil wants to do everything he can to exasperate you and get you where you just give up. No, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. I'll show you how to be in, invigorated. And I'll show you how I do what I do. Um, I'll be 70, what? Uh, 78 this year? Yes. And let me, yeah. And I'm telling you what. I can run these young bucks down, man. I can. But I do it. I'll share my secret with you tomorrow. I do it through superhuman energy. I'll show it to you straight from the Bible. I'll get them to put the verse on the screen if you need to see it. Superhuman energy. Yeah, yeah. See, you can't do the works of God in the flesh. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, declares the Lord. And I'll talk to you tomorrow about being infused with inner strength. Yeah, yeah. You can't drink enough Red Bull. <laughs> now they got that other stuff, man. Good gracious, <laughs> you know. Just you let the Holy Ghost have his way out of your river will flow rivers of living water. Well, anyway, I'm so glad to be here. Now, listen, I mean that. God's up to something. And uh, I'll, I'll just share a little bit about it to tell you this. The building ain't big enough. Listen to me. You, oh, you go, oh, no, don't start that. Yes. It will not be many days ahead till you'll have to go to multiple meetings to get the people in. I, yes, that's true now. I went off down to Argentina. I went out down to Argentina and uh, the pastor says, uh, uh, Cla Claudia Frizon said, uh, would you speak to my staff? I said, yeah, well, I, I'll be happy to speak to your staff. So he said, okay. So he brings me to a place and we come through a door and there's 1,500 people in the room. I said, I thought you said we we're going to speak to your staff. He said, this is my staff. He started out with 40 people in his church. But the Holy Ghost fell. 
Now there's thousands of people that come. They have church sometimes four to five times a week to feed all the people. Isn't that amazing? Wow. See, God wants to show you something about the harvest. Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with the harvest, but it's the laborers that need to be energized. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he'll thrust forth laborers into his harvest field. And one of the ways he's going to bring in the harvest is supernatural signs and wonders. It says, and multitudes believed when they saw the miracles he did. Wow. See, now here's what's happened. Don't tell anybody. Skepticism has so ravished the church till they say, I ain't going to believe it till I see it. Totally opposite of what Jesus Christ taught. John eleven forty, John eleven forty. Jesus Christ said, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see? Skepticism said, don't believe it till I see it. Jesus said, believe it in order to see it. Wow, isn't that cool? John eleven forty. You doing good? Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Don't you just enjoy enjoying? I don't, I will not hang around grumpy, sour, cynical people. Why? Why? Psalm 1611 says, in his presence is fullness of joy. See, some people have just enough Jesus to be miserable. They got him in the head, but not the heart. They got rules, regulations, stipulations, manipulations. Stop all that. I studied the Bible. God don't like religion. What? God don't like religion. Here's what he says. Oh, way with your new moons and your Sabbaths and your holy convocations. They weary me. Does that sound like he's turned on with all those? No. He don't like the ritual. He wants the relationship. But when you junk the relationship and hang on to the ritual, you've got religion. And God don't like that. He wants you to be in relationship with his son. Don't you think? Well, sure. So, you say, well, Bobby, what am I, how do I get back where I need to be? A big word across the body of Christ right now, a big word is recalibration. Recalibration. Getting back to the original point of accuracy. That's what we need. In it. That's what it says in the Bible. Remember from whence you've fallen and return back to your first love. Get back to the original point of accuracy. One of the things we need to really look forward to is truth being rescued. The Bible says truth is falling in the street. Truth's falling in the street. And we've got to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. Here's your great verse about truth. You ready? Proverbs 23, 23. Proverbs 23, 23 says, Pay the price for truth and don't sell it for anything. That's right, pay the price. There's a price for hanging on to truth, isn't there? Yeah. There's some hot people hostile to the truth. Yeah. There's people teaching directly opposite of what the Bible says. Yeah. We've we got to get into the Word and let the Word get into us. Yeah. That's true. What do you do, the guy on the end? Yeah. Hey, look out now. I had me a mullet, you know, way back there I had me a mullet. I was preaching, swing my head around, I had to spit my hair out. Yeah, 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 but anyway. What, 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 how long you been barbering? That's good, well, bless you. I'll tell you a little, one thing I'd like for you to do now, you can do it. When you got your hand on the head, I want you to start blessing them. You, you don't have to do it, you can just, you know, a little snip here and a little, you know. And you could, you'd be surprised what would happen. It, it's a social study. People find it easy to talk to their barber and their bartender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've done these social studies, you know. The, most of them's crazy as a bat. <laughs> yeah, anyway. But the, people will talk to their barber and they'll talk to their bartender and tell things that they wouldn't even tell a psychologist. So when you get your hand on their head... Just say, you know, a little prayer in your spirit over him and see what will happen. Maybe you might, the Lord might show you that he's got a vertebra out of place. And you could say, uh, I don't want to be nosy, but uh, I, I believe the Lord wants to heal that back. 
And see, now I'm serious. Listen, I'm, listen. Why would God give us gifts to put under the bed? We've got to put them on the lampstand to give light to the, all the people in the house. Anyway, okay. One thing I like to do is to make sure you can't follow me. Because you'll say, oh, I've heard that before. No. He said, behold, I do a new thing. It's new now and not prior to now. So you wouldn't say, I already knew that. That's Isaiah 48, 6 and 7. Isaiah 48, 6 and 7 says, God's new thing is brought into being by the prophetic word. And today you've not heard of it. Wow. It's brought into being by the prophetic word. Isaiah 48, 6 and 7. That's what it says. Isn't it good? Well, let's mess around on this side a little bit. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Now, look at him. How old are you? 34. 34. That's good. That's, that's amazing. What are you doing with your life? You got any plans? I am a software engineer. Oh, Lord. <laughs> mm. I know absolutely nothing about that stuff. I bought Apple Care, you know, and so I had a, a issue. So I called Apple Care, and this young man said, uh, "Yes, could I help you?" And I go, "Oh, oh," and it just here it got so bad. To here's what he said, "Sir, would you look and see the cable that's coming out? Is it plugged in the wall?" But that's, isn't that something? Computers. <laughs> ah, software. Isn't that something? Well, God bless you. Here's a deal if you want it. God wants to give witty inventions, smart plans that work out. Somebody's going to take these virtual reality goggles and they're going to use the, the mechanics of the Avatar movie and they're going to put the stories of the Bible on these virtual reality goggles. It'll be the greatest seminary we've ever seen. It'll, okay? Okay. They'll do some mechanics of that Avatar movie where it looks like the, and they can create the angels flying. So think about that. It's witty invention, smart plans that work out. Anything's been done once, there is a better way to do it. That's right. Anything that's been done once, there is a better way to do it. Especially when God is releasing those witty inventions, smart plans that work out. What do you think? Smart plans that work out. You ought to ask the guy that made the frog tape. Mm-hmm. Ask him if it works. Would he invent smart plans that work out? Always a better way to do anything that's been done once. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, we're going back here just to make sure everybody's awake. <laughs> you doing good? good? Me too. There, there's some verses about us. It says we'll be full of sap in our old age. That's in the Bible. Isn't that something? Fruitful, full of sap in her old age. You're smart as a whip. You're very intelligent. Yeah. No, you are. You, you've got, it's in your genes. I don't know, how, but I'm telling you, you're smart. And use that for the glory of God, okay? All right? Uh, yeah, numbers and stuff jump around his head like ping pong balls. That's true. He's, that's, that's what, I took outer one, two times a day for four years. So I can spot a smart person. Yeah. Yeah. The only way I got out of school, I could play football. That's the only way I got out of schools, playing football. Anyway, so you're going to draw some things. Yeah, Don't. well, Professor and I have a few questions. Are you? Did we? See the, isn't that cool? See there? Uh, see, that's good. See, I wake up in a new world every day. But that's so good in the mouth of two or three witnesses. So I, I witnessed to my own self about you, didn't I? <laughs> See? All you got to do is just be yielded. Well, you know, I want people to... Listen. Listen. I'm telling you, you cannot have the respectability of people and still do what God wants. Paul said that he, the apostles were like the off-scouring of the world. Wow. Isn't that something? Well, anyway, I'm going to get up here and read some. Okie dokie. Do y'all host Spider-Man? 
you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the walkway through the ceiling here. <laughs> but it is, it's very artistic looking, isn't it? You know, it looks like Grandpa tore down his barn or something. <laughs> but a lot of churches have these. I mean, really, it's, it's an end thing. But I don't know if this is the only one I know that's got it ceiling. But anyway, like you need me as an architect. Mm. Okay. I, I get it asked, you know. Well, they stand at the book table and say, can you tell me which one of these books I ought to buy? Well, all of them. No, here, here, this is one. This is Dread Champions. And I'll just read the little back, click on the back cover. It says, God created you to be a world changer, a limelight warrior, a dread champion. The entire world is poised for swift, radical change. We're, we are coming to the end of the age. It is a season when the seeds of good and evil are both coming to full fruition. It is time for advancement. Heaven's hosts are here to help us. And this is where we talk about uh, being mighty warriors for the Lord. And uh, I'll just read a little bit about it, but uh, called uh, Dread Champions. Wow. I got this big verse here. This, this is pretty wild. It says, God will be with us like a dread champion. Let me find it here. There it is. Jeremiah 20, verse 11. But the Lord is with me like a dread champion. Therefore, my uh, persecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will be utterly ashamed because they have failed with an everlasting disgrace that will not be forgotten. God's with us as a mighty warrior. Psalms 104, verse 4, it says, Angels are with us as ministering spirits. But get the book, if you will, Line Like Warriors and Men. We talk about David's mighty men. And I, the, the Lord said, study their names, their Hebrew names. You'll find some mighty uh, attributes that I want my end time people to, to, do, to display. And so, boy, uh, one guy defended a bean field. One guy killed 800 guys in one day by himself. Can you see this guy? He defends a bean field, and it says he, he's, he grasped the sword so long till his hand claved to the sword. It means it became part of it. Now, see, sometimes we won't even fight for our families, let alone defend a bean field, a lentil field. But anyway, I want you to get the Lion Light Warrior book. I, like I said, I'll meet you at the book table later. And now here's the, here's the shepherd's rod. For 26 years on the Day of Atonement, listen to me, for 26 years on the Day of Atonement, I've had a visitation from Jesus Christ. He come to me and tell me some of the things that's going to happen in the future. I write in a book called The Shepherd's Rod. This is one for uh, 2020, uh, 2021, and it's called My Help Comes from the Lord. You write it a year in advance. You write the shepherd's rod a year in advance on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And this is the one here. He said, I want you to describe and, and, and get my people to understand their help comes from the Lord. And it comes out of Psalms 121, verse 1. Psalms 121, verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills. And then we quote it like this. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. No, no, that's not what, that's totally erroneous. That's not how Psalms 121 verse 1 is written. I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. It's a question. I lifted my eyes to the hills. Where, where does my help come from? We have a propensity to look at the wrong resource many times. And you find out where it comes from in, first, in Psalms 121 verse 2. Psalms 121 verse 2 says, My help! comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Wow. We need to find out how adequate the Lord's help is. And we need to find out how to reject looking in the wrong resource. Remember when the disciples came and Jesus came out of the temple? Matthew 24. Jesus and the disciples come out of the temple. And the disciples stopped Jesus and said, I want you to look. Look at all this. Basically, they're saying, look what we've accomplished. And Jesus said, don't look at all this. There will not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. See, we have a propensity to look to the wrong thing. They were looking to the mountain. They were looking to the mountain for their help. Some geographical place. No, we need to look to the creator of that mountain. And boy, the Lord's help is adequate. And we need to look at that because we have this problem of trying to substitute. Remember Adam and Eve? Substituted 
fig leaves instead of the blood of Jesus. Remember the Tower of Babel? They said, let us build us a house into heaven. But God showed us real quick, they didn't have a building permit. (laughs) God came down and smushed their building. Guys, I want you to get, where does my help come from? Wow. And uh, study study this. We talk about the pandemic. We talk about prophesying about it. And the whole prophecy was, it's going to get us to the place where we can embrace a greater glory. That's what's coming. I'll tell you what's coming. The whole earth is going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, God's got big plans for us. Well, okay. You can get the books out there and read them for yourself. Because the... let's, let's ask a couple of questions. If you were standing right here in front of me and said, Bobby, I've got a question I'd like to ask you. At the beginning, you talked about future Uh, do you know what my future holds? Nope, but I know who holds your future. Here's here's what God, if you'll let God control your future, here's what he says your future consists of. You ready? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I know my thoughts, I think, toward you, declares the Lord. Thoughts of your success, not your failure. My intention is to bring you to a good end, not a dismal demise. God is saying, your future is filled with bright hope. Wow. Stay on the pathway of God because it assures you bright hope. It assures you success. How do you do it? Joshua 1, 9 says, be bold and brave, very courageous. Go do what you're called to do because you're not going by yourself. Joshua 1, 8 says, the words of this law, the words of this book, the Bible, shall not depart from your eyes. You shall meditate upon them day and night, and they will guarantee you overwhelming success. What? They'll guarantee you overwhelming success. Joshua 1, 8. Okay, now if you want to be a flop, stay out of the Bible. (laughs) But if you want to be an overwhelming success, feed your soul on the Bible. I'm telling you, the Word of God will give, it'll be a lamp to our feet. Psalms 119, 105, that Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Psalms 119, verse 130 says what? Here's what it says. The entrance of your Word, the penetration of your Word brings light. It gives me a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. You know what we ought to do every time before we study the Bible? We ought to pray Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. I pray the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You will have a grasp and a comprehension of the words of God. See, you can't discern it just with your natural mind. You have to ingest it into your spirit. The Word of God. Let me tell you what. The Word of God is not just print on paper. The Word of God is a person. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. It's the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Full. Full. I'm... Yeah, a little hot, but I'm being okay. So, what do you do? Did we ask, talk about that? Uh, I don't do anything right now. That's so boring, isn't it? What What do you want to do? I don't know. So you're moving, you find it, okay? Is God going to go before you and make the crooked way straight? Here's what happened. Isaiah 40, 3 through 5 says, uh, the Bible said, uh, Prepare you the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway. Lord, the mountains fill in the valleys. The crooked ways straight. Stumbling stones picked up. That'll be good. All right. I'm looking at this. <laughs> well, yeah, the bar and the hole. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know this is honest to God truth? I saw all the piercings before they ever got here. <laughs> honest to God. This is all true. You, my wife, she was sitting here. Because I'm, I'm preaching one time and I see, I see some hyper piercing. I mean, good Lord. Looked like a fishing lure. i never seen so much dang- <laughs> dangling in my life. And then uh, then we were off in uh, uh, Europe somewhere a few years later and saw it the first time, you know. I'm telling you, but listen, I asked the Lord about it. Yeah, I did. And he said he, he didn't mind just so you don't do it cultically, you know, do some goofy stuff. Isn't there something? Uh, he seemed to have been pierced. Yeah, it didn't. But anyway, So what I'm trying to tell you is let people alone and let them really fall after the Lord. 
I was out here in, well, I'm in here, California now, but I'm somewhere out here in California a few years ago and uh, at six, about 6,000 young people in a youth conference thing. So I called this tall kid out. I said to him, what are you doing? He goes, dude, I got a scream band. <laughs> Call me a dude. <laughs> dude, I got a scream band. And I said, scream band? Now, I'm from Texas. We know Willie Nelson and people like that. <laughs> George Strait, you know. Anyway, I, got, I used to ride bulls. I got knocked out one time, heard Conway Twitty singing. <laughs> That's pretty bad. But anyway... This, you've heard the story. The guy says, well, I got a gig after this. You want to go? And in front of six or 7,000 kids, I go, yeah. I go, and I said, yes. He said, it starts at 2 a.m. Some abandoned mall in whatever town we were in. Somewhere out here in California. We get there, 2 a.m. Oh, Lord. I'm the guest. So they put me right here. There's a speaker big as that wall. Right there. Anyway, now here comes the Patriots, or whatever you call them. Good Lord. It looked like the Adams family. You never seen so much piercing and stuff, man. They came in. They came in, filled up this place like you couldn't imagine. And then it started. It started with, you can't call it music. Oh, a terrific sound. It boiled my blood. My blood started. The sound came by and like to blew my hair off. Just whoosh. And then, that was the musical part. Then the kid started the vocal. Mm. Now, I've never, that's my first screen band to ever be in. But the, my definition of this, of the vocal, was it was like he swallowed the mic, got it about halfway down, and spent the rest of the night trying to cough it up. <laughs> Craziest, I mean, listen. I'm there thinking, oh Lord, I could have been back at the hotel, but I'm here, and these kids are having a time. These young people. But watch this. In the middle of that melee, the Holy Ghost falls. These kids are coming forward, throwing down dope pipes. They're, they're throwing out junk and trash and getting born again. The Lord said, Bobby, what do you think about this? I said, Lord, what do you think about it? He said, I think you never change the, the message, but you need to adopt new methods. He said, these guys will never come here. You preach. But see, this guy was preaching. Finally, 5 o'clock when the sun started coming up, they shut it down. Oh, God, I was so thankful. And then I, I, I said to the tall kid, I said, uh, uh, I want to see your lyrics, if you don't mind. I could not understand one single word you said. And this is, this is what got me. He said, sure, popped up there and opened this computer punched the thing and the songs about have you been to Jesus for his cleansing power are you washed in the blood there is a fountain filled with blood and sinners plunge beneath its flood loots all their guilt and stain he took the old songs of the redemptive power of the blood and put it in a genre these kids could respond to see and the Lord said don't ever change the message but adopt new methods now I'm not wanting to put on a big scream band concert but uh, I'm telling you guys the gospel works. If we'll just get through all of the garbage and present Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll do what? Draw all men unto myself. We've got to lift him up, haven't we? In your own families, we've got to see a great outbreak of soul winning. People are desperate enough now to listen. They're desperate. People are looking for answers. And guess what? You've got them. Isaiah 50 verse 4. Isaiah 50 verse 4. You ready? Catch this and it's going to go by you. Isaiah 50 verse 4. I will give you the tongue of a taught one and you will know how to reply and respond to the people that ask you, how do we navigate these dark days? I'd grab that one, wouldn't you? Isaiah 50 verse 4, the tongue of a taught one. Wow, because people are looking to the church and we don't need to go, oh. 
Here's what's going to happen. I wrote it on pastor's board. He's going to turn our question mark into an exclamation point. Watch this. That's what's going to happen. He's going to turn our question mark into an exclamation point. Well, that's good. We got to go. Got to catch a plane tomorrow night. No, I don't know when it is. I might get to, I might get to change it. You know, we'll, ch- we'll see since we're leaving a little earlier. All right. They take your camera away from you? No, oh, you, you just loaned it out, did you? A church got me some recording stuff for Bobby's briefings. Just a church for a missionary thing. I guess they got tired of watching it so grainy. You know, they go, is that Bobby or his uncle? You know, no. <laughs> but isn't that cool? I mean, you know, it's high definition. Got enough lights you could barbecue with them. You know. But anyway, it's, it's pretty nice. How many of you ever watched Bobby's briefings? It's pretty wild. People from all over the place, man. And let me tell you something. Uh, God, God is moving. And, and we need to move along with him. So uh, that's good. Don't give up on anybody. I don't care how hard and hateful they are. Don't give up on them. God's able to save to the uttermost. He can. He can redeem people. So don't give up on them. I'm glad. You know what they, told, they said about me, my, my relatives? They said, well, he'll be dead or in the penitentiary time he's 21. So I tried to live down to their expectation. It's true. But see, God had a plan. At Jeremiah 29, 11, I know my thoughts I think towards you. See, I, I wasn't searching God. God had already chose me and called me. I was running away from the call. Wow. Have you ever thought about the demonic guy of, the, of, Ga, of Gazeret? <laughs> yeah. Whew. I've seen some people like that. Good Lord. They're naked as a jaybird. Whatever I do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God. Have you come to torment us before our time? I'll answer that. Yes! We're not going to build a church where demons are comfortable. We're going to build a church so full of the power and the presence of God, they manifest and get cast out. And that's right. <laughs> Setting captives free is part of the deal. It is. You say, I don't get involved in it. you already involved in it. Yeah. And but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Well, we've got to get out. Good Lord, it's, it's late. I've, I've, left. I've got to pray for you and minister to you. The, have you ever read the Bible? It said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yeah. Is anybody in this room sick enough to be prayed for? Are you sick enough to be prayed for? Okay, stand up. Remember, you can if you want, if you want to. The, the light's green, isn't it? Good. So what's wrong with you? I don't know what that. I don't know what all that is, but God knows every hair of your head, every cell in your body. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. You are the healer. You said you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, Lord, you're you're uh, you're laying your healing hands upon this man right now. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just reverse every spoken word curse, and Lord, release health to him. I pray you'll make him ever with totally well for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Give, give me five. Five's grace, you know. All right. I, won't, I really mean it. I prophesied over one lady. I said, God's healing you of your diabetes. She said, I don't believe in healing. I said, well, I can't, I can't help that. God's healing you. This is, this is absolutely true. This is in California. And, and guess what happened? She didn't believe in healing, so she took one of those things and almost went into a, some kind of a shock. Still mad, got up and ate four sugar donuts the next morning trying to prove she was not healed, but she was totally healed. Her husband is a famous artist. He paints uh, sea creatures. Or, yeah, but anyway, I got a, a bunch of paintings of sea creatures. <laughs> but see, God wants you healed. Yeah, you know. Do you want to be healed? We gotta, we gotta believe in healing. Peter walked by and his shadow would heal the people. Wow, that's what Jesus said when he said, Greater works than these shall you do. Isn't that something? What do you do? I'm kind of retired right now. What'd you quit from? I was a chiropractor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Whoo. I know. I told y'all I played football. Good Lord. 
they'd have to readjust you, you know, and stuff like that. But anyway, well, so you're thinking about quitting? I'm, I'm retired. Yeah. He's retired. Okay. Well, it would be a great time to be missionary. <laughs> you know, in the Bible it says one generation will spend the rest of their days telling the next generation God's everything He says He is. Said the Lord and applaud the mighty deeds of God, convincing the next generation God's everything He says He is. That's Psalms 146. What are you going to do with your life, you know? What are you going to do with your life? I'm a new nurse. A nurse? You are a nurse or you? Graduated. You just graduated last year. Oh, man. Well, God bless you. You're looking for a job in the hospital. The Bible said, let your request be made known unto God. The Bible said, we have not because we ask not. 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence we have in God. If we'll ask Him anything according to His will, we know He hears us. If we know He hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. I'm going to ask God to open the job for you in the hospital, okay? Father, here's this young lady. She's trained herself for being a nurse, and Lord, she wants a job in a hospital. And Lord, I thank you that she wants to see people healed and helped. And so, Lord Jesus, open the perfect job for her, and we'll give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We have not because we ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. The Bible said it this way. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. They're yours. Here's your verse and then I'm through. You ready? Here's one. I dare you to believe it. Make up your mind what you want. Tell God what that is and he'll get it for you. What? That couldn't be in the Bible. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Make up your mind what you want. Tell God what that is, and he'll get it for you. Where is that at, Bobby? Job 22, 28. And you shall decide a thing. Make up your mind. Then you decree what you've decided, and the Lord will establish it. And the light of his favor will shine upon your pathway. Mm-hmm. Make up your mind. What you want, tell God what that is, and he'll get it for you. He will bring it into existence. Wow. Job 22, 28. Well, it helps to know the Bible. So I'll meet you at the book table in a moment. But uh, I just want to bless you, okay? I really mean that. I want to bless you. Lord Jesus, I pray for these men and women in this room and those that are watching. I pray for the living Holy Spirit to move in their life. I release over them now Nehemiah 9, 20. You said you gave your good spirit to instruct us. And withheld not your manna from our mouth. So Lord, I pray you'll bless those that are listening, those that need breakthrough and miracles. I pray that you would show yourself strong on their behalf. Lord, we vow to give you glory for all that you do. Do anything and everything that you want to do so that your glory can fill this whole earth. You said you're going to fill this whole earth with the knowledge of the glory of your Son. And Lord, I thank you for that now. Thank you that you've promised us that you're getting us in a position to embrace a greater glory. So Lord, we're going to move from one dimension of glory to the next. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to head out to the book table. Let me find my stuff. Hey, would you guys give him a hand? God is good. Before we make the transition to the end of our service, I just want to invite up the ushers. We're going to take our offering for Bobby. We're going to make a deposit and sow a seed into the word that was spoken tonight. It's an act of faith. It's an act of worship. This is a, a decree that we make with a thing that is of value to us. But God has provided, and freely we have received, and we freely give. He's faithful to his word. So I'm going to pray over the, the offering. We're going to pass around the, the buckets. If you are giving by check, go ahead and in the little note, you can make it out. Just the little note section say Bobby, but make your checks out to convergence. And also we have uh, push pay or our con, um Oh my gosh, someone help me. Church Center, thank you. I was going to say our app, but our, it's not our app. It's our church center. 
You can give on Church Center as well. That's a fantastic way to give. And just in the little note, say Bobby. Father, thank you so much for everything that you've deposited tonight. We are sitting with great anticipation for what you want to do next. And Lord, we say yes to your moving. We say yes for your will to be done in our lives. We say yes to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thank you guys so much. We're going to pass around the buckets. Once it's reached you, go ahead, go grab a book from, from the table. And also, if you need prayer, if you have any need that is in your body, that is a, a situation that you're in, we're going to have a ministry team up here for you for about 20 minutes. We would love to pray for you. If you have a need that is to be met, that needs to be met, don't leave until you get some prayer, okay? All right? Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we're doing it all over again. God is going to move. It's going to be so much fun. We would love to have you, so come on tomorrow morning. Love you guys. Be blessed. Thank you for coming tonight. See you later.